The Putt Portfolio with Andy McNeil. Hey, welcome to the Puck Portfolio. My name is Andy McNeil. I'm your host. I'm here on weekdays to provide NHL projections, betting advice, picks, and strategies to help you make informed bets throughout the NHL season. This show is sponsored by North Star Bets. We'll be using North Star Bets odds on this show. You can check them out via the link in the description below. They offer some great NHL markets as well as early odds on the next day's NHL game. So check them out. Anyway, we've got three games on Friday. It is February 23rd, and the game that I want to zero in on is my hometown team, the Edmonton Oilers. They're in action on Friday against the Minnesota Wild. And aside from the fact that this matchup itself has trended toward the over, betting on the over in games where the Wild are a road underdog has been a very successful strategy. Minnesota is 12-4-3 to the over in 19 games as a road underdog this season, and they are 6-3-1 to the over in their last 10 games against the Edmonton Oilers. And the two teams have combined for seven or more goals in seven out of the last 10 meetings. The Wild, though, have only Oilers in recent seasons, going 8-2 and two straight up against Edmonton since the start of 2019-20. Obviously, we had the pandemic season in the middle there, but the last three full seasons, Minnesota has done very well versus Edmonton. They're 1-1 one and one versus the Oilers. This year, the Edmonton Oilers have won the last two meetings against the Wild at home, though, including a 4-3 win on December 8th. They had to come from behind to battle back from 2-1 and 3-2 deficits after jumping out to an early first period lead against the Wild. They outshot Minnesota 40-20 to in that game, had a plus two expected goal differential, uh, and um, probably should have won that one a lot easier, but as has been the case uh, in games against the Wild, the uh, Oilers have had trouble putting them away and and have had trouble winning games against Minnesota. And I think objectively looking at the Oilers since their 16-game winning streak ended, of course, they've been having trouble keeping pucks out of their own net. They've allowed three or more goals in eight straight games. But objectively, they've had a more difficult time winning games. So uh, I don't know if the juice would be worth the squeeze here on the Edmonton Oilers. My model... Uh, has the Oilers as a minus 177 favorite. Uh, a little bit of a change from the projection that you saw on Thursday's show. Of course, we looked ahead briefly to Friday's NHL odds, but we know that Calvin Picard is likely going to start in this game. Stuart Skinner probably going to start on Saturday when the Flames come to Edmonton to play the Oilers. So Wednesday's loss against the Boston Bruins, that was the Edmonton Oilers' first loss at home in two months. Uh, they're 8-2 and two in their last 10 at Rogers Place. So expect the turnaround, but it, it probably won't be easy. I'm hoping for goals in this one, betting over 6.5, six, uh, six sorry, at minus 120 to win a half unit. That is available at North Star Bets. Relatively good price, as a lot of other sports books are at minus 125 and minus 130. So locking that in, over 6.5 goals at minus 120 to win a half unit. Now, switching gears to Saturday, of course, we've got a big, big slate on Saturday, a lot more to talk about, uh, but I want to get right into the play that I've got the most interest in. It's the St. Louis Blues at plus 135. This is a one-unit play. Uh, of course, the Blues got the big 4-0 win over the Isles on Thursday. They, they didn't play very well, but they scored a flurry of goals in the second period and held on as the Isles lost yet another game. So, We've got the St. Louis Blues in Detroit taking on the Red Wings. And these two teams share a lot of statistical similarities. Uh, looking back at the last 30 days, both rank among the bottom 10 teams in expected goals percentage and shot attempt percentage. But the Blues goal share and expected goal share is slightly better. Both teams also grade out among the top 10 offensive teams. Uh, and, and in the top half of the league in goals against over the last 30 days. But St. Louis edges out Detroit. The Blues are also 7-3 and three straight up in their last 10 road games, while the Red Wings are 6-4 and four at home in their last 10. But St. Louis is 6-4 and four straight up in their last 10 games versus the Red Wings and 7-3 and three straight up in their last 10 games versus Detroit as the away team. So let's hope they continue that trend. I think plus 135 is far too long here. These odds should be a lot shorter as you can see. The model has this one at minus 114 in favor of the Red Wings. 
The next one that I've got is the Toronto Maple Leafs. They're in action against the Colorado Avalanche. I've, I've talked a lot about how I'm not necessarily looking to blindly fade the Avalanche, but I do not hesitate to bet against them when I can get what I think is a good price. Detroit squeaked out an overtime win over the Avalanche as an underdog uh, on Thursday, and now the Avalanche are going to be hosting the Maple Leafs, a team that is rolling right now. In the last 30 days, the Avalanche ranked 24th in expected goals percentage in all situations. The Maple Leafs ranked third in that category for what it's worth, and the Maple Leafs have had success against the Avalanche, going 7-3 and three in their last 10 trips to Colorado. Toronto has been outscoring teams 4.5 to 2.5 per 60 minutes over the last 30 days, while the Avalanche have barely scraped by with a 50.7% goal share. Colorado ranks as the fifth worst team in expected goals against during this stretch. So going up against the Maple Leafs team who have scored more goals per game than any other team over the last month will be a test for sure. Lock in Toronto at plus 116. Half unit play was going to be a bigger play, but this one moved pretty quickly. Opened up at plus 123 at North Star Bets, moved down to plus 116 just in the time that I started recording. So I had to adjust my stake because it was going to be a one unit play, but down to a half unit play at plus 116. Now, look, it might be a little bit jarring to see the Canes as such a big favorite against a team like the Dallas Stars. Dallas is arguably the, the best team in the Western Conference. How can they be plus 130 on the money line? Well, I don't think it's all that crazy, but there is some uncertainty here uh, as both goaltenders ended up playing in Thursday's loss to the Senators. And maybe the Stars are unsure who they will start uh, on Saturday. After all, they've been playing a lot of hockey since the All-Star break. And, and that's the other thing. I worry that I might be underestimating just how tired some of these teams are. We saw it in Vancouver on Thursday and Dallas, for that matter, as they lost to Ottawa yet again, 7-0. and The Senators are against the Stars since 2017. Uh, I think it's Dallas or nothing here. I'm just not going to lock in a straight play at the moment, though. Uh, instead, I'm going to put a quarter unit on a Dallas-Nashville money line parlay for plus 250 because I estimate that the true odds are closer to plus 210. So some value there on a two-teamer. Hopefully the Dallas Stars can get the job done because it looks like the Nashville Predators will have a fairly easy time with the San Jose Sharks. They should be a much bigger favorite. The Boston Bruins at the Vancouver Canucks. Maybe if Boston had dropped their game versus the Oilers before losing to Calgary and Vancouver hadn't ended their road trip on such a sour note, we'd see longer odds on the Bruins. But the Bruins, of course, beat the Oilers 6-5 in overtime. They forced overtime versus the Flames uh, while the Canucks lost four games in a row for the first time all season. Vancouver's biggest problem right now is their power play. Prior to the All-Star break, Vancouver's power play was converting at a 25% clip, but the Canucks have failed to score on a power play in eight out of nine games, going one for 28. For Boston, the biggest concern is that their blue line is missing two key pieces in Hampus Lindholm and Matt Grizzlick. Matt Grizzlick could be back in the lineup in time for this game in Vancouver. Some big notes, though, out of some other games here as, look, Panthers forward Matthew Kachuk was injured in the first period of Thursday's game versus Carolina. He did not return. The extent of his injury is unknown at this time. He is considered day-to-day. Kings forward Victor Arvidsson back on injured reserve after sustaining an injury in Tuesday's win over the Blue Jackets. Arvidsson is expected to be out until at least February 29th. And Capitals forward TJ Oshie needed help getting to the locker room after sustaining an injury in Thursday's win over the Lightning. So some big names there to take into account as you handicap Saturday's game. All right, that does it for Friday's episode of the Puck Portfolio. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel. I've got four plays, three straight plays, and a two-team parlay for Friday and Saturday. So on Friday, it's the Edmonton Oilers and the Minnesota Wild. I'm looking for that game to go over 6.5 goals at minus 120, half-unit play. And then on Saturday, my two straight plays are the St. Louis Blues, one unit at plus 135, looking for them to beat the Detroit Red Wings, and half unit on the Maple Leafs at plus 116, looking for Toronto to get a win over the Avalanche in Colorado. Then I've got a two-teamer, a quarter unit at plus 250. That is... 
Nashville at minus 192 combined with Dallas at plus 130 equals plus 250. I think that one should be priced closer to plus 210. So a bit of value there. Quarter unit play on that two-teamer. That is all I've got as far as early bets go. Might have some more as we get into the weekend. I will let you know on Twitter or do another little update here on the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel. In the meantime, good luck with your bets and gamble responsibly.